ranked Ole Miss is in town, and the Tigers look poised to upset the upstart Rebels. Plus, we take a look at some classic LSU Ole Miss moments and welcome some very few special guests. All that and more. It's going to be a good one, guys. This is Tiger TV Tailgate Show, and it starts right now. Hello everyone, welcome to the Tiger TV Tailgate Show here on the Journalism Manship Building patio. I'm Morgan Beer, joined alongside the Sports Desk crew this week. Yeah, right. the Game Day Desk, John <laughs> Lombardi and Taylor Corrett. And as we all know, Ole Miss is coming into Death Valley tonight for a highly anticipated SEC battle. Guys, are you ready for it? I'm so ready. Wait. Third ranked Ole Miss is in town, 24th ranked LSU Tigers, college game day. The whole atmosphere is incredible. It hasn't been like this in years. Yeah. Cannot wait. October, that's when it starts getting exciting. The end of October and the weather starts getting nice. It's just a beautiful day for college football. Can't wait. Hey, we'll get to the game. We'll talk a lot about both Ole Miss and LSU. It's a jam-packed show, so let's get right to it. But well, we're going to start with the recap of last week's game. It's LSU-Kentucky as Kentucky came in 5-1 and one here in Death Valley, and LSU took care of business to the tune of a 41-3 victory. Let's check out how it all went down last Saturday in Death Valley. As you see right here, guys, the play of the game, Tredavious White, 67-yard punt return right out of the gate. This after LSU was already up 10 to 0. Guys, everyone thought it was going to be a close game, but the route was on early as LSU jumped out 17 to 0 with Tredavious White punt return. It was huge. LSU's been waiting for a big special teams play like that all year. Tredavious White broke it open and really set the tone for LSU in the game. And right there, Anthony Jennings, only one touchdown, but that was it. And look at that exclusive footage. He has to see did not yeah. play this. So, oh, there you go. bringing you the footage of Terrence McGee right there, did it both on the ground and in the receiving game. He had over 100 yards total and a couple touchdowns on the day. Now, guys, what can LSU take from Kentucky's, not only the Kentucky game, but the Florida game from two weeks ago into this game tonight? They're riding on a little bit of a momentum streak right now. What can they do to keep riding that streak? The biggest thing I saw from the Kentucky game was LSU on defense looked like LSU of old, aggressive, energetic fast to the ball, celebrating after big plays. The LSU's defense just had a different spark, a different look to it than it has had for earlier games this year and even games last year. That was the biggest thing for me. That I think LSU needed a defensive game where they could get a real good defensive spark. And I think that was just it last week. Well, they won those ball games based on turnovers and special teams, and that's how LSU wins ball games. That's how they're going to win tonight. They need to force some turnovers and special teams. That tangible will help them. And that was only a couple weeks ago, LSU was looking like a very flawed football team. And going against an opponent like Ole Miss tonight, a lot of challenges will be presented. So what are those challenges that LSU will be facing tonight, Johnny? Well, you know, it's kind of a strength on strength. Ole Miss is strength on the offensive line. LSU with a strength in running the ball. Kind of two immovable objects going to collide tonight in Death Valley. It's a cliche to say that, but it's true. Can LSU establish the running game early against Ole Miss, going up against their strength with our strength? Can LSU use their core four running backs and really power through and get that running game established? They can do it. It's just going to be very difficult. When Johnny talks about strength on strength, another strength on strength is the uh, LSU defensive backs versus the right. Ole Miss wide receiving core. Taylor, what do you know about those guys? Well, I know that LaCron Treadwell yeah. is a player for Ole Miss, yeah. and Bo Wallace is an elite quarterback in this league. I think he's third in the SEC quarterback rating. LSU's defense at secondary, they're really starting to come on as late, forcing turnovers, making tackles. But they have been lit up by Dak Prescott, Nick Marshall. That that will be a huge battle tonight. I, I want to see how it plays out. Which secondary is going to show up for LSU? That's the, my one question. Yeah. Which secondary is going to show up? A little up? bit of Jekyll and Hyde so far this season, and they're going to need the best version of that secondary to come up big against the pass attack of Ole Miss. But guys, we're going to get to Ole Miss. We're going to get to more LSU. We're going to get to every layer of this game coming up later in the show, but it's time for the first break. And coming up after the break, two of LSU's gymnastics finest join the desk live. Johnny Lombardi with an exclusive interview with Ray Corville and Mitzi Hall. Stick around. That's why. Hi, welcome back to the Tiger yeah. TV Tailgate Show. I'm now pleased to welcome the desk, Lamencia Hall. Lamencia, thank you for joining us so no much. No problem. 2014 I'm going to be here. SEC floor champion and the perfect time against Alabama that went viral. We're so happy to have you on the desk here for the Tailgate Show. I'm how sorry. are you doing and how excited are you for this game day today? I'm so excited. I think that road everything road. is so exciting when it comes to homecoming, when you're able to see excuse me, excuse me. alumni come back. It's truly tradition, never graduates. Shot. And this is what LSU shot. is all about, truly pride and tradition. Absolutely. Moving on to gymnastics, the season's really almost 
right around the corner. Absolutely. How are uh, off-season workouts going and training and really getting ready and molding this team together into yeah. a unit that can make another run? It's so amazing to see when yeah. a freshman come in and we've really, they've go. really yeah. molded yeah. and come into the Good culture out. of what LSU Gymnastics is all about. Right. We're all about going after that national championship. We were so close with winning third last year. So we're coming close to that first place and each and every day we're getting in, getting things done and so awesome to see it start January 9th. A question we asked uh, Coach Bro in our interview with her for the first game they showed, the new gymnastics hey, facility being built. Done. How excited are you all that, for that, maybe not individually, but just for the program in general? It's so wonderful to see that it, all of our hard work kind of go to such a wonderful building and facility. Didi Bro, and along with the coaches and vendors and different in individuals that have seen LSU Gymnastics grow from the bottom up, to see the amazing facility coming up, it's just so warming in my heart, and I'm so glad to be a part of this program and to be able to continue to see the spread of such a wonderful wonderful organization that Didi has truly built here at LSU. Now in the past few years, few years we've really seen LSU Gymnastics come up into the spotlight on campus and it's just become really huge. How great is that for you guys now going into this year knowing that like LSU Gymnastics is it in the winter? We are so excited because I mean the one thing about it is LSU Gymnastics was truly like kind of like the sleeper sport yeah. here and so to be able to come like everybody's awake to the exciting thing want to see when season gets started can't wait for spring and just excited to really come and support us as they do the other sports we're so excited to be able to just be a part a part of LSU and what they're all about and truly a part of tradition now the season as I said just around the corner what's it gonna take for y'all to take that next step for, to get to the level where you can can you're at the level to compete for a national title obviously what's it gonna take the next step to get that national championship one thing is that it's gonna take is consistency consistency wins and everything counts so inside out inside and outside the gym for us to really kind of have that mindset to say no matter whatever it takes we're gonna do what we can to get to that national championship and we're not gonna settle for less Lamencia, thank you so much for joining us. You can check out LSU Gymnastics January 9th against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yes. It'll come up a lot faster than we think. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here on the Tiger TV Tailgate Show with a lot more. Thanks. We're here with Browning and Studu, their Ole Miss uh, student media. Thank, thanks for joining us, guys. No uh, problem at all. How's no your problem. experience in Baton Rouge been so far? It's been pretty good so far. Uh, you know, I've been here one time, but I was really young. It's been really good to see the university and just kind of take in a different tailgating experience from what we have at Ole Miss. Absolutely. How does yeah. it compare? It's a great culture in Baton Rouge. It's my first time here, and I rank it with Ole Miss and Alabama in the top three tailgating spots in the SEC. What do you guys expect uh, out of this game tonight? I mean, give me an Ole Miss perspective. If, if you're an LSU fan, who's a guy to watch out for that maybe we don't know about? You know what? I, I think that you guys really need to watch out for Sinquez Golson right now. Uh, he's one of the best defensive backs for Ole Miss. He's second in the country in interceptions right now. And Sinquez Golson is a top threat DB in the NCAA right now. Uh, some Heisman talks have been brought up for him. And if I'm a young and inexperienced quarterback like Anthony Jennings or Brandon Harris, that's a guy that I truly look out for. And, yeah. you know, in the past, at LSU, that they've had the advantage at quarterback with uh, Jordan Jefferson, Zach Menberger, but now Ole Miss experienced quarterback Bo Wallace, the most experienced quarterback in the SEC, and he's having a great year. He's got a good completion percentage, and I think Bo, he's won at Texas A&M. He's beaten Alabama at home, and I think he's ready for this type of environment in Death Valley. Oh, certainly, and... Uh... I mean, it's a different matchup this year. Doesn't it feel like, I mean, LSU is normally ranked higher than Ole Miss. What, what, what is that feeling? Is it kind of strange it's, almost in Oxford? What, what are people in Oxford It's feeling? a different feeling. I grew up in Oxford. Browning grew up in Memphis, pretty close to Oxford. And, man, I've got to say, I've seen some heartbreaks. Uh, you know, that 0-3 game, for example, uh, yeah. when, you know, it was a very hype, hyped up game. And then you had just a few years ago when last time Ole Miss was in Death Valley, you know, Dale Beckham Jr. returns that punt. Right. This year it's more of a Ole Miss is a stronger team and LSU struggling a little bit. So Ole Miss fans feel good, but you can't ever feel secure when you play a team like LSU because it's such a great rivalry. Right. So, I mean, you're still kind of nervous, but you feel a little bit better than in the past, past yeah. few years. And, you know, back to that 2012 game, Ole Miss, they really played very well in that game. They had the lead early, but LSU just came back in the fourth quarter. And that game was really a turning point for the success for Coach Hugh Freeze and the Rebels. And look where they are now. They're number three in the country, and they're, they're favored in this game. Absolutely. Now, before I let you guys go, I do want to ask about this corn dog uh, fiasco. <laughs> 
in Oxford, I mean, are they talking about this corn dog thing when Katy Perry came on? I know in LSU, most fans are confused about it. Well, you know, I think it may have started here. Uh, yeah. I, you know, it's kind of like an urban myth. No one really knows how it started. <laughs> but I feel like it was somewhere here, you know, someone said they smell like corn dogs or something happened. Right. It just kind of took place from there. And, man, it's, uh, it's something we make fun of LSU fans for. Right. Uh, and, and it's funny. I think both sides shake around about it. Uh, so I, you know, I really don't know where it started, but it's kind of fun to fun to have that. Yeah, it, it's it's just a little funny SEC tradition, and I don't really know where it started with myself, but it's it's kind of cool, and it's oh, yeah. it, it brings a lot of hype to the game. Oh, it's all in good humor, and plenty of storylines for this game. I, we're so excited about it, and thank you guys for joining us. Enjoy your time in uh, Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be right back here on the Tiger TV Tailgate Show. Hello, welcome back to the Tiger TV Tailgate Show. Great interview there. Get a little uh, yeah. other perspective from the Ole Miss Rebel yeah. side. Good stuff there, Taylor. I oh, appreciate it. It was fun to get that perspective, and uh, maybe it'll be quite a shock for them in Tiger City. <laughs> Hopefully. You never know. But we have the band coming back behind us. But, Morgan, just how big is this for the LSU Ole Miss rivalry? As we've seen it. It hasn't really died out, but it's yeah. been shrunk by Florida and Alabama. We kind of talked about that earlier, but how big is this game tonight for that? Well, even though Ole Miss has actually beaten LSU a little bit over the years, it's always been kind of LSU's the big brother in this situation, and Ole Miss has always been kind of a little brother and kind of, you know, they have their moments, but mainly LSU has been running this rivalry over the last year, let's, put it, let's be honest about it. But now this is when rivalries <laughs> take that next step. Absolutely. This is when it becomes, you know, oh, LSU's big brother. This one is mono e mono time. Ole Miss is going to come to Tiger Stadium tonight. They're the lead dogs. I'm interested to see how they handle this kind of thing, because usually they're coming in as the underdogs, and now they're three-point favorites in Tiger Stadium, which is, for this game, this rivalry especially, is something I don't think we've ever seen before. So. The tables have turned. It's the next step in that rivalry, and uh, it's just going to develop from this point on. Absolutely. This, this is why people love SEC yeah. football, man. The passion, the pride, the history. It, it's the reason people come out and watch. And it's why 102,000 will be in that stadium tonight. Right. You get ready for the band coming down Victory Hill, about to do the, the famous. Bum, yeah. bum, bum. Don't ruin it, John. Don't ruin it for people. Yeah, yeah. Don't ruin the yeah. surprise. I'll let but, the um, band. You know, just one of the greatest <laughs> traditions that LSU has. Let's take a look. Feels packed, Morgan. Yeah, this is probably uh, this game. You know, usually this is reserved for Alabama only. But now, given what else she's doing, wait, here it is. Is it coming? We'll just take a listen out here to the sound. Uh, this the is Spence. Kills me. There's a drum roll. Chills down your spine. Every week we talk about it, guys, but honestly, it never gets old as cliche as that sounds. Absolutely. You know, I'm glad we get to enjoy this right there. Look at all the fans, phones out, everything like that. Yeah. Everyone just taking in the moment. You know, it really is one of those things. I, I said it, all the fans out there hadn't been like that yeah. at all this year. It probably may not be that way two weeks against Alabama. You never know. But just jam packed the anticipation for this game is something I haven't seen in two years here in Baton Rouge. And, you know, Talk about this old Miss rivalry, it really is old. And Tiger TV's Mitch Rabelais took a look back through the years of the LSU old Miss rivalry. In 1963, John F. Kennedy was president. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech, and that was the last time that the old Miss Rebels were SEC champions. Now ranked third in the country and heading into an all important showdown in Baton Rouge, the Rebels are looking once again to capture the conference title. But once again, the purple and gold gladiators from Baton Rouge stand in their way. In 1959, Billy Cannon returned to punt. In 1970, Archie Superman could not get it done. In 1972, Burt Jones threw the pass to the end zone to score as the clock stood still. And in 2003, Eli Manning could not get it done and find the end zone against the Tigers. <laughs> But this year, the Rebels head into Death Valley as the heavy favorites and looking for the win. But Les Miles' team has something different to say. The dynamic offense led by running back Leonard Fournette has the old school run between the tackles style. The defense is looking to reclaim its identity as a dominant unit that can shut down dynamic offenses such as old misses. And the team is looking to recover from their comeback against Mississippi State that came oh so close. It's LSU and it's Ole Miss. It's the Magnolia Bowl. Who will win? Well, we'll find out at the game. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Mitch Rabelais.
A great look back at the history of this rivalry. Brought to you by Mitch Ravelet, the only guy in Tiger Team who can fit MLK and JFK in one package. You don't see that too often. But guys, we're gonna throw it to our next break. But when we return, a very special guest, Edwin Edwards is gonna hop on the set for a quick interview. You don't wanna miss that, stick around. Welcome back to the Tiger TV tailgate show. And as you can see, we are joined by a very special guest, former Governor Edwin Edwards. Thanks for joining the set, sir. Glad to be here. Kind of an impromptu visit. We saw you out there, so we're glad you can make some time for us. Well, it's very good. I'm glad to be up here. Uh, look, it's wonderful being here. Oh, yes. Purple and gold. <laughs> All these happy people. Yeah. And I know after the score is final tonight, we'll all be happy. <laughs> and we, we hope you're right. Except the people from Mississippi. <laughs> we, we don't care about those guys. But uh, we'll get to the game in a little bit. But you're on the campaign trail right now going for Congress. So what's that been like? Very interesting. And I've been uh, in many campaigns. This is very it's different on. And I it's hope on. That people realize that it's really not about the public or Democrats. Yeah. Principles and projects. It looked like it was on. Getting things done. Exactly. I like to believe that my maturity and experience. It's on. It's on. Been it's on. My so long, so it served me well. One thing is good. I can't make it any worse. <laughs> exactly. Well, we wish you the best of luck Thank going you. forward with that. And sir, let's talk about the game now. As we kind of get you a new microphone right there. Um, let's talk about the game now. How much have you been keeping up with these uh, LSU Tigers that'll be taking the field tonight in Death Valley? Well, it ought to be about 28, 21. Tigers. Yeah. 28, 21. We don't want to beat them too bad. They are our guests. <laughs> we have to be courteous. So got to be respectful a little right. bit. Okay. Right. And uh, is there any certain player in the field you're looking forward to seeing tonight, or do you think Les Miles is going to pull anything out of his hat tonight against Ole Miss? Well, you never can tell what Les Miles is going to do. No, no. I continue to remain confident in him because I guarantee you he'll take advantage of every opportunity. Exactly. And sir, well, we don't want to take up too much of your day. We know you're a busy guy, but we really do appreciate you coming by the desk, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you much. Good Go, Former Governor right, Edwin right. Edwards here at Tiger TV Tailgate Show. We'll be right back. Back to the Tiger TV Tailgate Show. Great to see Edwin Edwards jump on the desk right there. That was nice. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Tons of great interviews. Jim yeah. Miss, Edwin Edwards, Ole Miss guys coming on the show. It's been great. Great stuff here on the Tiger TV Tailgate Show, as always. But guys, let's get to the meat and potatoes of the show. Oh, potatoes. Keys of the game, I love real quick. <laughs> yeah. Let's get to it. Keys of the game and a prediction. Taylor, we're going to start with you. I think, first off, the key to the game for LSU is you got to force turnovers, and that secondary has to make plays. Special teams will also be important. Keys for Ole Miss is, and don't let that crowd affect you. Tiger Stadium is going to be rocking. Bo Wallace, he's played in big games, but this is a, a home game. That, that Alabama game was in Oxford. They were comfortable over there. And we'll get to your prediction in a little bit. Johnny, what are your keys? My keys to the game for LSU to start off with is establish the run game. It's going to be a challenge to establish that, but get all four. We're starting for the core four running backs. Get them all going. See which one breaks up today. Establish the run game is going to be huge for LSU. Strength on strength with that Ole Miss defensive line. And my key to the game for Ole Miss is just to be optimistic, be energetic, make plays. Go losses to manage the game and not put the Rebels in bad spots. Get the ball in the hands of his playmakers right there like Raquan Treadwell. That kid's from Illinois, he can make plays. Get the ball in the hands of his playmakers on offense and manage the game. Don't hurt the team on offense with turnovers. Johnny never fails to uh, give a shout out to old Chicago or Illinois Anytime there. Anytime I can. Anytime you can. Now guys, <laughs> prediction time. Prediction time. You I want to hear guess? your prediction we'll in a minute, minute, Morgan, but I'm going to... This game is going to be tight in the first half, and there's going to be some turnovers probably. Then the offense is going to kick in in the fourth quarter. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game, 34-24. to 24. Tigers. 34-24. In Baton Rouge. LSU. Set, number three. I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to go the defense. I think LSU's defense has really been turning it on. Ole Miss, obviously, with the great defense. 20-17. to 17. Tigers eke one out with the upset. Guys, I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with you guys. You know, you, you call me hashtag puppies and rainbows, yeah. and it continues. I just don't see a team coming in here with the way the Tigers are playing, with everything that's gone their way the last couple weeks. I think the Tigers are hitting their stride at the right time of the season. Maybe Ole Miss has had their time. Maybe they peaked a little bit too early. We'll see tonight. But I'm with you guys. I see a squeaker. I see a close one. 2017 is possible. I think it'll be a little higher score than that. I say 30, 27 LSU. And that's it. Let's get it started. Put it on the board. Let's board. go. But guys, that's the end of the show. Everybody will be packing the stadium right behind us for a big and big, highly anticipated game tonight against the Tigers. We'll see how it all unfolds, and we'll see you guys in two weeks when we come back for Bama Week. For Johnny Lombardi and Taylor Corrette, I'm Morgan Beard. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.